Welcome back to your culinary arts class. We're gonna go ahead and demonstrate the second mother sauce for today, okay? Any guesses on what that sauce is gonna be? If we're starting off with our lightest colored mother sauce, you're correct. In case of any of y'all are wondering who I'm pointing to, nobody. <laughs> so what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna go ahead and go into our second mother sauce or demonstration out of our four mother sauces, all right? We're not doing all five, remember? We will not be doing sauce tomate, okay? So the second one that we're gonna go ahead and go into is we're gonna go ahead and produce volute, right? V-O-U-L-U, it doesn't matter. Volute, right? All right, so the first thing that we're gonna go ahead and do, the ingredients for sauce volute or volute is gonna be a roux, right? And what, is that cons what does a roux consist of? That's gonna be equal parts fat and equal parts flour, right? So the ne next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna use, it's almost like a bechamel. Now with a bechamel, what liquid did we use? I'm actually pointing at someone for a change. We used milk, right? Now, last week I went ahead and demonstrated on how to make a chicken stock. So today, we've got our chicken stock, right? Now, this is not considered a clear stock like our vegetable stock was, okay? We made this stock so we could go ahead and make our volute sauce, right? Now, with that being said, our bechamel was made with milk. So it was made with a roux, equal parts fat, equal parts flour, with our milk, and then white pepper and salt to taste, right? Now with our volute, what we're doing, the only thing that we're changing is gonna be the actual liquid that we're using, okay? So when we go back to talking about our building blocks, we talk about everything leading up to what we're doing, right? So our mother sauces are basically starting right back at square one for building block number one, right? But what we do know is that when we started at building block number one, technically in the culinary industry, which is mirepoix, then we go in to our stock making. We are now taking that stock that we learned how to make last week and that we did make last week. And we're gonna go ahead and put that into one of our mother sauces, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate how to make the mother sauce of Alute. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hold that over so we can go ahead and make our secondary sauce later on this week, okay? Now, what sauce do you think that might be? Well, I already know what it is. Do you? I'm, I'm literally talking to someone. No, that's a mother sauce, but that's a really good answer. We're gonna go into Supreme. Now, what's the difference with that, okay? We're gonna go ahead and that is the sauce. Has anyone ever had a, a chicken pot pie? Yes. Okay, so that sauce that is in your chicken pot pie, the secondary sauce or the derivative sauce of that is gonna be the supreme sauce, okay? So the way the supreme sauce actually starts out is mother volute. Let's get started. Okay, so you will also notice, as always, I have everything sanitary, sanitized, I'm sorry, my hands are clean. You didn't watch me, but they're good. I've got my sanitizer right here. I've got my trash over here. And I've got everything good to go. My, my, my mise en place, I'm sorry. So I've got my white pepper, my salt, my flour, one tablespoon of butter, and some extra butter just in case I mess up a little bit on my roux. So what is the first thing that we're gonna start with? We're gonna go ahead and heat our butter, right? Now, remember, I am using a Bunsen burner. If you are using one of these, please be careful at home. I always talk about accuracy, not speed. Why is that? Because we don't wanna lose no phalanges. So, what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna slowly melt this down, well, or, well, in this case, pretty quickly. You've already seen this before. You will notice that I am just gonna lightly melt that down or slowly melt that down. I've got, uh, medium low-ish uh, heat level on it. Now, what did I talk about with stirring with metal against metal, especially against aluminum? We really don't wanna stir too much because we really don't wanna mess up the color of the sauce that we've really tried to achieve, right? So now that our butter is melted, I'm gonna go ahead and go in. Now, again, equal parts fat, equal parts flour. I've done a tablespoon of Fat. So I'm gonna go ahead with about one fourth of a cup of flour, okay? And I'm going to stir this in. 
Now, one thing that is really different with this is we're trying to make this into a blonde roux. So we're gonna cook it a little bit until we really smell that nutty smell on it. And it's got a nice blonde color to it, okay? Do we have any questions so far? No. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and cook this a little bit. You will see the consistency right there. And I'm gonna cook it down until I can smell almost like a pine nut flavor or scent per se. I say flavor because I taste with my nose. All right, so I'm gonna leave that right there for a little bit. And I'm gonna make sure I have everything ready, which I do. I've got my one cup of chicken stock. And then I've got my white pepper. Why are we using white pepper? Exactly. All right. Do you smell that smell? Ooh, it smells good. I love the smell of a beautiful roux. That smell comes from a cooked flour along with that beautiful butter, okay? A lot of people like to use different thickening agents. Personally, I really like to use a roux for most of my thickeners. The reason being is because I feel like it's more successful with it. Also too, I really do feel like it brings out some really good flavors rather than cornstarch, okay? So you will now notice that it is quite blonde, right? Or uh, I wouldn't say necessarily a caramel color, but it's almost there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take a cup of my chicken stock and I'm gonna go ahead and pour that right in. Woo, sizzle, sizzle. Always be careful. And what do we always do? We make sure that we always lightly whisk all the corners. What kind of whisk am I using today? A French whisk, okay? The reason why I really like to use a French whisk is again, this actual point. It definitely gets right into those little crevices of your sauce pot to where a lot of other whisks can't really get into. Now, what is another item that you could definitely use this whisk for? Well, making a meringue, why not, right? It is a French whisk. Okay, as per usual, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna bring this right up to 180 degrees, and then I'm gonna bring it right back down so we can go ahead and activate that thickening agent, and then we can get a really nice sauce. It's almost there, as always, I've got to keep stirring it, right? And then I'm gonna plate that for you, and then we're gonna go ahead and see what the color looks like on there, okay? Now, right back to my actual Bunsen burner, I'm gonna bring the heat up a little bit. And remember, lightly whisk, because we really don't wanna discolor this beautiful sauce. You can already see the color of that sauce. It's nothing like a bechamel, nothing like a bechamel. Ooh, careful. I'm gonna bring that right up. I do know that my roux is fully dissolved, so I'm really not worried about getting it all over the sides and whisking all the way around, okay? Now, what is another thing that I'm looking for? I'm looking for those bubbles, right? Wow, you can already see that thickening happening. Oh, it smells so good too, that chicken stock. We made a good chicken stock in class, y'all. All right. So I'm looking for those bubbles. I want those big, I want those big, big bubbles. I want them to burst slowly, okay? That is one thing we're looking for. We're not looking for a boil, not at all. We're looking for a simmer. And I believe I am just about there. You will notice right here, if y'all can see those fine bubbles right there, the way those bubbles are moving, that is exactly what you're looking for, okay? So you will now notice this is actually the perfect consistency right now for a sauce velouté, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and take that off, the heat. Now what happens when you cool a thick liquid down? What do you think happens? It thickens up, right? And why is that? The temperature is changing, okay? So I'm gonna let this cool a little bit. And what I'm gonna do from there is I'm gonna go ahead and take my white pepper because we want to keep that flavor. I mean, I'm sorry, not the flavor, but the actual color that we strive so hard to keep. 
I'm going to add a pinch of salt and I'm going to go ahead and whisk that together. And you will now notice that we have a beautiful volute sauce and it absolutely smells divine. So now what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and plate that for y'all. And I'm going to show you exactly what to look for with the consistency and with the color. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and take my plate. I'm going to grab a nice little ladle. This is a little bit thinner than what you're looking for, but I'm okay with that because I can always thicken this up. And I'm going to go ahead and take that and I'm going to plate it right over. What do you think about that? What do you think about the actual color? It's a beautiful color, not like a bechamel whatsoever. Okay. One thing you will notice is that it definitely smells like chicken stock. Okay. That's what we want. That's exactly what we want. Could you use this with a vegetable stock? Absolutely. Could you use this with a beef stock? Absolutely. But it would not be considered a volute. Okay. All right. As always, I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, you know where to find me and I'll look forward to the next video.